Welcome to this episode of Marriott MBA Today. I'm Tim Hansen, joined today by Professor McQueen. And today we're going to be talking about one of the most, uh, one of the hottest topics out uh, in the political campaigns right now and in the market, and that's the unemployment rate, the jobs market. So Professor McQueen, can you talk to us a little bit about how we find out what the unemployment rate is? Yeah, the Department of Labor, once a month, does two big surveys. Uh, one of uh, establishments of businesses, one of uh, households, and they uh, report the first Friday of every month, uh, they give us these numbers about how the employment situation looks. Mm -hmm. I've heard talk about a non-farm payroll. What is that? The non-farm payroll comes from the, uh, the establishment survey. So literally once a month they're calling 140,000 businesses, and these businesses may have uh, um, factories or offices all around the country, and they ask uh, how many people are working. And the last Friday they announced we have 143 million people working in the United States. And that number is not quite as important as they said. It's up from the prior month by about 114,000. Mm -hmm. Kind of lukewarm uh, report on the change in non-farm payroll employment. And the other survey, the household survey? Mm -hmm. So the, they also call about uh, 60,000 homes. And when they call the homes, they survey everyone. Uh, they want to know about everyone over the age of 60. And they put these people into three buckets. And the first bucket is they're working. The second bucket is they are unemployed and have looked for work. And then there's this third bucket that can be a little bit troubling because it's grown a lot in this recession. And that is uh, people who are out of the labor force. So Tim, you're out of the labor force. You're a student, so you're not, you're not even. And uh, my dad, he's out of the labor force. But my, my cousin Charlie, he would be in the unemployment bucket because he wants a job and he's recently looked for a job but hasn't found one. Okay. So they announced uh, uh, 7.8. They take the number of people who are unemployed, divided by the sum of the employed and non, uh, unemployed, and then they uh, say, last month, 7.8% of the population was unemployed. Okay. And of the two surveys, which one do you give more weight to? I, I give a lot more weight to the establishment survey, the business survey. First of all, it, it's a lot more people and consequently they can be a lot more accurate. So the establishment survey could say um, there's 150, 143 million people working plus or minus 100,000, whereas the data collected from the uh, uh, 60,000 households, it's uh, plus or minus like 800,000. Or the, uh, the unemployment rate 7.8, give or take 0 0.2. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I put a lot more weight on the establishment survey. And so now that we know where the unemployment numbers come from, talking about the, the recession that we're coming out of now, from a perspective of the job market, how are we doing um, coming out of that recession and related to former recessions? Yeah, uh, although GDP growth has kind of been trickling up and, and down and we've, we've grown slightly, job growth has been pretty dismal. I have a slide that we could, uh, we could show that talks about um, this recession compared to the other recessions. So we see here, there in the middle, that time zero. What does that represent? So uh, what I've plotted here are 11 of the post-World War II recessions. And at time zero is the trough. That's when the NBER has said, aha, we hit the bottom. It's all gravy from here. We're, we're, we're going upstream. Mm -hmm. and, and I noticed they all start from 100. Um, and there's an employment index. What, what does that mean there all start at 100? Well, um, I wanted to have an even horse race. The population was very different in, uh, right after the war than it is now. So I just made an index uh, and said, uh, let's, let's start them all at the same place and see which horse wins. OK, so I see that they all start about 24 months um, prior mm -hmm. to the bottom of the recession. Now that bottom line, that red line, that's the, the current recession we're coming from? Yeah, one of these things is not like the other, <laughs> right? As Big Bird was saying. And uh, so the red line is our recession. And uh, you can see it's been going on for uh, over three. The recession has been over for three years. And still the, uh, the job growth has been very, very anemic. We can tell that it's, it's much different than recessions in years past. Yeah. Right. Well, Professor McQueen, uh, we want to talk a little bit more about um, where we would be if we hadn't had a recession as far as job growth. I know that we've been adding the recent, most recent uh, reports that we added about 114,000 jobs. Um, where are we in relation to where we would be without a recession? So I have another graph given a trend line, but uh, the, the important thing to note is in a typical month we should add about 125,000 jobs. And last month the good news is we added jobs, 114, but not even enough to sort of keep up with the population growth. So we see here that that green line then is where we would be without a recession, a normal growth period. Right. If we added the normal 125,000 jobs a month, 
um, would be following that green line, and instead we've been bouncing along the bottom. And that red line shows where we've tracked with employment. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we're about what four and a half million jobs lower than we were when the recession started. Yep. From our peak, we're down four and a half million jobs. But more importantly, is there should have been seven million jobs created, and they're missing. So uh, I, if you ask me, I'd say we're down uh, 11 and a half, maybe 12 million jobs. And on top of that, Tim, some people estimate one to two million uh, non-documented workers have left. So that could be as, as high as 14 million. Uh, yeah. And the, so here's the problem. If we added uh, 250,000 jobs a year, remember the, the last few months we've been adding just over 100,000? Mm -hmm. If we could add 250, which we don't do very often, um, we would be uh, take us at least four years to get to where we should be now, and let alone where we should be four years from now. So it's a, it's a, a deep recession. Uh, the recession's over. The jobs haven't come back, and we need to find uh, 12 million jobs in a hurry. And if we're lucky, that'll take four or five years. Well, Dr. So, sorry to disappoint you. You <laughs> MBA students are go out and look for work, but. Uh, it is what it is. Hopefully it recovers before we graduate. Yeah, let's hope. Well, Dr. McQueen, thanks for your time. Uh, we appreciate you joining us here on Married MBA Today.